Tonight, we report on how a California man was determined to be competent to stand trial and how the county is asking for more time to decide on the fairground septic system. What's going on in sports, Bob? The Columbia Basin River Dogs take the Central Washington Classic and the Mariners sweep the Yankees. Let's take a glance at our weather center forecast. Good to be with you, everybody. Scattered showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. I'll let you know if any of these unsettled conditions will be creeping into the basin. All the details in a few moments. I'm Alan Troop. Stay tuned for all of this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. A California man will face a trial for allegedly killing a Moses Lake man in a July 18th collision. The case against 33-year-old Ronald Kincaid has been on hold since October when attorney Rafael Gonzalez asked for a mental health exam of his client. Kincaid is facing charges of murder, assault, and vehicular homicide. Gonzalez asked for the initial mental exam because Kincaid reportedly had problems with assisting his attorney. Examiners at Eastern State Hospital reported Kincaid was competent to stand trial. Kincaid reportedly told witnesses on July 18th he was upset because his brother died and planned to drive his 1996 Chevrolet Blazer and kill people. Kincaid's SUV reportedly collided with a 2013 Dodge Dart, killing a 50-year-old Moses Lake man. There is a new option in entertainment for kids and young adults. The game, Magic the Gathering, is a collectible card game and the focus of a new business in Ephrata. Here's Jeff Chu with the story. Bobby McCurdy has filled a retail business void in Ephrata and Grant County, opening Midworld Games at 221 First Avenue. The new shop in town offers gaming supplies and board games. The shop has space and tables for weekly card game tournaments. Local game fans can also relax in a video game room. The game store is a place where people can hang out and play games at night after work. The shop attracts children as young as eight and as old as middle-aged adults. McCurdy said the shop gives adults an option to hanging out at bars and offers a place to meet people, play games, and buy hard-to-get games. Game fans can play Magic, Dungeons & Dragons, Star Wars, all types of board games, and video games. McCurdy said Midworld Games is the only such central Washington shop outside of Wenatchee. See the website at midworldgames.com. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Thanks, Jeff. The Grant County Commissioners are asking the state to give them more time before making a decision about the fairgrounds septic systems. The Commissioners are asking the State Department of Health for 18 months to conduct more testing and investigate connecting the fairgrounds to the Moses Lakes sewer system. The response comes after the State Department of Health sent the commissioners a letter giving them until June 30th to decide. The department alleges the septic systems at the fairgrounds are not capable of handling the amount of waste produced during the Grant County Fair. They claim the systems are contaminating the groundwater. A Spokane man is accused of raping his 16-year-old relative during a 2012 concert at the Gorge Campground. Prosecutors charged Jory Vaughn, a 20-year-old man, in Grant County Superior Court with rape in the second degree. Vaughn allegedly attended a concert with the victim and her family in August 2012 and stayed in the campgrounds. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, Vaughn and the victim reportedly went back to the campground to drink during the second day of the concert when Vaughn allegedly raped her. Deputies initially investigated the incident last year, but the victim reportedly declined to speak to officers. Investigators claim she changed her mind after Vaughn allegedly assaulted another family member. Now let's take a look at people currently being sought out by the Grant County Sheriff's Office. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. 
If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this break. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance, we are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. We believe. We believe in home and all the magical things that come with it. We believe in living rooms with forts made from sofa cushions and blankets. We believe in the man cave, the woman cave. And finally, we believe that our calling in life is to find the home that's perfect for you. Coldwell Banker, fulfilling dreams for over a hundred years. Good to be with you, everybody. I'm Ceci Gutierrez with your local weather report from the One News Weather Center. And this segment brought to you by our Bud Clary Toyota dealer, Toyota. Let's go places. Let's begin with a quick look at your headlines. Quiet weather in the forecast for our immediate area. And yes, we should be seeing rounds of showers and thunderstorms, but they won't be necessarily making it into the base and into our immediate area. Dry and pleasant conditions overnight tonight, a bit breezy at times. And those rounds of showers mainly across northeastern sections of the state and northern Idaho. Here's a quick look at the conditions during the past 24 hours. Temperatures topped out around 83 in Efreda, the low mid 60s and the sunset 8.48 this evening. Across Moses Lake, the temperature, the high, registered at 84. 58, the low, and the sunset, 847. Here's a quick look at the conditions right outside your door with dry conditions, mostly clear skies, and that wind out of the west-northwest at around 14 miles per hour, gusting a bit stronger with temperatures around the lower 80s. Quick look at the scenario across the area. All of this precipitation exiting the region, mostly cloudy skies along northernmost point of the Idaho Panhandle. Some scattered showers along the border with British Columbia, but otherwise dry conditions expected even as we head into this Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours, some scattered showers expected to develop, but overall dry conditions throughout the much of the extended forecast, especially for the basin with beautiful weather and our our temperature is a bit on the warm side. Here's what we can expect for this Wednesday afternoon. Most of the cloud cover confined to the northwest. Mostly sunny skies from Ponteray to the Tri-Cities area. Temperatures around the mid-80s in Tri-Cities and along northern portions in the upper 70s. Here's a quick look a bit closer across the base and these readings in the mid to lower 80s with mostly sunny skies. Here's a quick recap once again for our immediate region for the basin this Wednesday afternoon. We are expecting beautiful weather with sunny skies. These temperatures in the mid 80s, approximately 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. Right around 80 for Thursday in the mid 80s throughout much of the extended forecast. So continued above normal temperatures across the region. Good to be with you everybody. This weather segment brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. We'll be right back with sports. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan. Welcome to the Toyota Time sales event. We're looking for something safe with a really smooth ride. He's a very light sleeper. Oh, the Camry's safe and has a smooth, comfortable ride. Oh, the Camry's oh. perfect. And you're in luck. It's Toyota Time, so it's a great time for a great deal. Yes! <laughs> you can lease a new 2014.5 Camry for $209 a month for 24 months with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance included. Plus, get $1,000 bonus cash. <sighs> Toyota, let's go places. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that 
our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's sports. The Columbia Basin River Dogs went 4-0-1 to capture the Central Washington Classic at the Johnson O'Brien Field in Afredo over the weekend. The team finished second going 2-3 at the Memorial Baseball Classic May 26 and is now 6-3-1 on the early summer tournament schedule. The River Dogs are back in action this weekend for the Whitworth Invitational in Spokane. The River Dogs are the host team for this year's Senior Babe Ruth World Series August 7 through 14. Well, Moses Lake drivers came up big on the quarter mile oval at the Afreda Raceway Park Saturday. Brad Morrison took the Jerry's Auto Supply Street Stocks competition. Morrison started the race at the rear of the field and used the outside groove to work his way to the front. He took the lead on lap number seven of the 30 lap main event. Brothers Adam and Joe Smith battled wheel to wheel in the Pepsi Racing 360 sprint cars. The two jockeyed their way to the front with Adam taking the lead from a hard charging Austin Weber on lap 10. Weber and Joe Smith battled for the second position until Weber's stellar effort was cut short just four, with just four laps remaining due to contact with another car. On the restart, Adam held off Joe for the victory. This weekend is motocross action under the lights. Gates open at noon, and the racing starts at 5. Well, Kyle Seeger homered, tripled twice, and doubled to lead the Mariners past the Yankees 10-2 last night. Seattle broke open a game of odd bounces with a four-run seventh inning. Seeger's three-run homer cleared the wall in the ninth. Robinson Cano was again relentlessly booed by Yankee fans, this time in a makeup game washed out April 30th. In the lineup, after sitting four straight with a bruised left hand, he went one for three with two walks. The former New York star drew a mocking cheer when he was caught too far off first by David Phelps. Mariner ace Felix Hernandez won his fifth straight start to match a career high. Seattle took all three games in New York for the first time since sweeping three in 2002. Sykes Orvis hit a three-run scoring triple in the top of the 10th inning to push Mississippi past the University of Washington 3-2 in the championship game of the NCAA tournament's Oxford Regional. Ole Miss will either travel to Louisiana Lafayette or host Mississippi State in the Super Regional round this weekend. Washington threw five pitchers in the game. Alex Nesbitt took the loss and the Huskies were eliminated from postseason play. Well, the Desert Classic Youth Baseball Tournament gets underway this weekend at Larson Field. Games will be played from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday through Sunday. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local communities since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of these many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. Game time. Papa's in the house. <laughs> wow, what's all this? I'm all about stats. For instance, have I got some numbers for you. Papa John's, a leader in online ordering. <laughs> you bet, Jim. You were the first pizza company to offer it nationwide. <laughs> What's the secret? Jim, it's the pizza. To celebrate our online leadership, get Papa John's new double pepperoni and bacon pizza for just $12. Better ingredients, better pizza. And a better way to get it, papajohns.com. Our spotlight story tonight is about a Soap Lake High School student's recent accomplishment. Here with the story is Jeff Chu. Claire Penfield, a Soap Lake High School 10th grader, is one of six finalists in the National American Legion Auxiliary Student Essay Contest. She was nominated by American Legion Auxiliary Arts Sempro Unit 28 in Afreda for her Americanism Essay Contest piece, How Can I Show My Pride in Being an American? Claire shared how she came up with her theme. 
Naturally, I thought like everyone else about writing it, you want to write about community service or something, or volunteering, or just honoring the veterans on Veterans Day. But I want, I was going to ask my family what to do, and then I just decided to write about them instead. Claire said it was a natural to make her family the focus of her essay. She said they are all patriotic and generations have served in the military. Just like his dad, my uncle joined the Marines. He has so many stories in it about his experience in the Marines. He said that it made him into a respectable man, taught him life skills, and hopes that someday, someday others, will pe others will feel the same. He has a huge respect for his country. When I visited his house, I see his military pictures on the wall where everyone can see them. He has a special Marine wallet he carries and the Marine stickers on his vehicles. He advertises his pride as he drives. Claire said she too would like to join the military, either the Navy or the Coast Guard. She would be setting a gender precedent by doing so, but first she said she would like to study nursing at Big Bend Community College. None of the women in my family have served, not that I know of, so I think it'd be kind of cool to be the first one. American Legion Auxiliary Unit 28 of Freighter Representative Jane Montaney, who helped judge Claire's essay, explained how the essay contest works. The Americanism essay contest is something that is put on by the American Legion Auxiliary every year. We receive the title from our national organization. Somebody back there comes up with the concept, and it's usually something that's designed to make children think. Montaigne said Claire's essay was first judged at the local level and next goes national. Claire's Soap Lake High School writing and English teacher, Sandy Barnes, said each year her class gets into deep discussions about patriotism with each essay theme. It gets them to be thinking about patriotism and things like that. And we really get a lot of discussions going around it and how to write. Claire talked about patriotism and its meaning at home for her. I not only like honor my family, but I honor everyone else. But it means a lot to my family because I've had a lot of family members serve and actually I think one of my cousins just got done serving in Afghanistan. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Just when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better, DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind-blowing. So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said... <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard, like confetti cake, now in a fresh-baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. Bud Clary Ford Honda is proud to be an automotive leader in our area. Since opening our doors over 54 years ago, we have kept a firm commitment to our customers. We offer a wide selection of vehicles and hope to make the car buying experience as quick and hassle-free as possible. You can trust that we will get you into the car or truck of your dreams. Bud Clary has an experienced and reliable service and parts department that is open extra hours to help fit our customers' hectic schedules. Come for a test drive today at 1200 South Pioneer Way. We are a proud supporter of Columbia Basin Athletics. In Northwest News, one of the largest berry growers in Washington, Sakuma Brothers Farms in the Skagit Valley, is dropping its application with the federal government to bring in more than 400 guest workers from Mexico. The farm says it will hire only domestic workers this season. The minimum wage will be $11.87 an hour, which is set by the federal government. Workers could earn more based on the amount they pick. The family-owned farm grows strawberries and blueberries. The Seattle Times reports in the past two years, the farm says it had to leave more than 900,000 pounds of berries in the field because it did not have enough pickers. Workers went on strike at Times last year over pay and working conditions. The Seattle City Council voted 9 to 0 last night to raise the minimum wage in the city to $15 an hour. The decision makes Seattle the first major city in the country to, uh, to take such an action. Como's Dana Ribic reports. President Burgess. Aye. Nine in favor, none opposed. <laughs> in a unanimous vote, the Seattle City Council made history and drew a chorus of cheers.
It's a historic moment. Um, it's been it's been a tough discussion on all sides. It's been tough on the council members. It's been tough on on the folks who've been in the negotiations. And I thought I just would show my my support by being here. Starting April 1st, 2015, companies with more than 500 employees have three years to gradually increase pay for their minimum wage employees to $15 an hour. Companies with fewer workers will have seven years. Socialist Council Member Kshama Sawant tried to make last minute changes to the plan, including phasing in the wage earlier, but she was shot down. There are more people competing for the same jobs. Obviously, teenagers lose out, people with less experience lose out. And so the solution to that is not to condemn them further to low wages, but actually to bring them on par with everyone else. Another group not happy with the approved plan, local franchise owners. Chuck Stempler with Alpha Graphics worries the higher wages will put him out of business. He says the plan is unfair. Although he has 85 employees, his company is considered a big business because it's part of a national corporation. It seems to be arbitrary and discriminatory and we would just like to be properly categorized as a small business, which is what we are. The International Franchise Association immediately announced it's filing a lawsuit to block what it calls an unfair and discriminatory plan that would harm franchisees. Those who own a local Subway or McDonald's are considered a big business under the plan. The newest Washington State Ferry is undergoing sea trials and scheduled to go into service June 15th on the Muckleteo Clinton route. The 144-car tow KT was accepted yesterday by Washington State Ferries. The Associated Press reports its addition will allow the oldest ferry in the fleet, the 60-year-old Evergreen State, to be retired. Tow KT is a Salish word meaning nice day, pretty colors. It's the second of three ferries being built by the Vigor Industrial Shipyard in Seattle for $384 million for all three. A father is credited with ending a high-speed police chase in Utah Saturday when the car came dangerously close to kids. He pulled his truck in front of the suspect's speeding vehicle, and it was caught on camera. For CNN, reporter Ashton Goodell has the story. Hey, you guys, watch out! They'll come! Get out of the way! Get out of the way! There was probably about 15 kids present in the park at the time. Um, about three of them almost got hit. Um, they actually had to jump out of the way. And I would say he was go he had to have been going at least at least 60, I mean, in, in the parking lot. The teenager went on quite a joyride before he ended up here at this park in Syracuse. It started in Duchesne County where police say the 14-year-old stole his grandpa's car and drove it several hours back toward his home in Sunset. We caught up with him and um, when the officer initiated the traffic stop, he did not slow down. My heart dropped. I, I honestly thought one of those kids was going to die. Police say the 14-year-old weaved at high speeds through neighborhoods and eventually turned into this park. That's when officers called off the chase for fear it might endanger the kids there. It was a quick-thinking parent who jumped in his truck and rammed the stolen car, finally ending the chase. The man who stopped the erratic driver was here watching his kids play at the skate park. He said he didn't think too much about what he was doing. He was just angry that somebody would be driving so close to his kids. The person who was driving the truck, he could see that the car was turning back into the park and he did not want the car to hit all of the children or any of the children in the park. And he actually pulled his truck in the way. The 14 year old is expected to face charges and is behind bars at a nearby detention facility. Neither driver was hurt in the crash. Get out! Honestly, I'm, I haven't stopped shaking since it happened. I'm just glad that everybody's safe. Ashton Goodell, Fox 13 News, Utah. And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.